Mountain FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com. And he is Indiana Borough Police Chief Justin Shaw. And Chief Shaw joins us here in our studios this morning. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack. Voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest, Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Wonderful. Wonderful. Got the uh, the deer beard going there, huh? I do. I do. Well, you know, it's November, so the police department traditionally, uh, yeah. we we suspend our grooming uh, policy and we, we grow a beard so that we can talk about cancer awareness and mm-hmm. just raise awareness. And it gives us an opportunity to, to be charitable in the community because... Uh, you know, we we make a personal donation to IRMC mm-hmm. in November uh, for the privilege, I guess, of, of yeah. growing facial hair. You know, police officers all across the world, very few of them get to grow facial hair. So, you know, this is this will be the longest that most of us have ever grown facial hair in our career. So we take <laughs> little, advantage of it. Little Movember coming That's along. it. That's it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hey, uh, police issues uh, in Indiana Borough. Uh, of course, there always are police issues. So we've had some... Uh, uh, pretty high level crimes that have occurred in the last two, three months. Um, uh, but general life uh, as a whole going on. And, uh, you know, you get to the fall of the year and you expect a little bit of an increase in, in traffic in town and an increase in, in crime incidents because the town's population basically doubles. It's been, to me, relatively quiet, though. I yeah. Don't, I don't know if it has been for you. Well, you certainly have a different perspective on it than I do. Yeah, I, you know, quiet is probably subjective. I think that it's been it's been generally peaceful and uh, absent a few higher profile, uh, really really negative incidents. It's it's been generally on a day to day basis pretty peaceful, and so we're very appreciative of the community for that, and we work very hard to achieve that because I think that the uh, you know the best case scenario for a community and its police department would be the absence of crime and uh, not an increase. But as you said, and and so accurately, an increase in an increase in our uh, number of community members, an increase in our crowds at special events increases the propensity for danger. It increases the calls for service. It increases the need for both police and fire and EMS. So it's a, it is a daily strategy that we execute. You know, there's a, an immediate strategy, a short-term strategy, a long-range strategy, and they're all important for public safety. Yeah. One of the things I noted, because I came into town on uh, early on Sunday morning last weekend, not this past one, but the one before, which was Halloween weekend, um, and uh, it was uh, much more crowded than usual, um, but, but that was okay. And, and I noted that there were police there. Um, and some of the lights were activated on some of the vehicles. Uh, but it was a, a really calm atmosphere, and, and I think that's a, a, a practiced or a rehearsed uh, type of reaction uh, that, that police have to incidents. Uh, if you keep a calm demeanor, then probably the people around you are more likely to as well. Well, I think that that's definitely accurate, and, you know, police all over the place, we have slow heartbeats because uh, we can't be too emotional about any one topic at any one time. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, positive relationships help this out tremendously also, because if there's a trust from the public to the police and there's a trust from the police to the public, then we can all handle business, no matter if it's negative or, or positive or what the, what the business specifically is, we have better outcomes. And, uh, really that's what we've worked very hard to do at the borough police department. And what we continue to work hard to do with all of our partners Mm-hmm. is to just continue to build positive relationships, continue to respond to the negative issues and respond to the emergencies with our training. Uh, but when we're not responding to emergencies, we're seeking and building positive impacts. And so the relationships that we build, we would hope, and we do see this, that there's an increase in reporting. There's an increase in people that want to come up and approach us and talk to us. There's an increased comfort level in town. I think that you know some of the piece that you referenced before is attributed to the officers and their demeanor when they're approaching situations. So, an emergency is an emergency, but Indiana and Indiana County has first responders who are calm under pressure, mm-hmm. and uh, that's really important. Traffic enforcement uh, is a particularly, not difficult, I don't think that's the word I would choose, but a uh, particularly um, concerning thing uh, when there are pedestrians involved. Of course, when you get past the Halloween uh, and, and all of the trick-or-treaters that you're watching out for, that's one thing. Uh, But, uh, for instance, there was a report uh, out about a number of cities considering banning right turn on red because of pedestrian incidents and Mm. and whether that's that's a philosophy that uh, that you want to follow in in Indiana Borough or somewhere else. That's that's up for the town council to decide. Uh, But 
the need to be vigilant uh, with people who are going to be walking out into traffic, especially those with their heads down. I think I told you last month I was uh, I, I watched a young man right here at the corner of Ninth and Philadelphia Street walk directly out into traffic. Head never lifted up from that phone, and everybody was coming to a screeching halt. It still never lifted. He, he never was alerted to the fact that there were other people there. They are oblivious sometimes, and it's a scary thing. It is, it is, and they are oblivious. And um, there's a lot of blame to go around for everybody sometimes when uh, traffic crashes or, or negative incidents happen. But I'll tell you, traffic safety is one of the most uh, – one of our biggest focuses, Indiana Borough has a lot of traffic. We have a lot of pedestrian traffic. We have a lot of vehicle traffic. We have school bus traffic. And so traffic safety, traffic safety is of paramount importance. And, you know, traffic safety generally is guided by three things, enforcement, engineering of the roads, and then education. So we're trying, and we've been trying for several years uh, with some positive result uh, to incorporate those three things. You know, we could be very enforcement heavy and not achieve excellent results. We could only focus on engineering our intersections better uh, and we wouldn't necessarily get the best result. We could do education and not touch anything else and try and have a positive result, but the three together deliver a positive result. So it's always a matter of enforcement, education, and engineering in town. And um, so it's a process, but I've said this many times on your on you, uh, with you, and uh, I'll continue to say it, that we can investigate a traffic crash well in Indiana borough, but the best we could possibly do is to eliminate that crash from occurring because once that crash occurs, there's already someone who's injured. There's already some, some property who's damaged. There are costs associated. There's the stress on your personal life. So although a motorist or a pedestrian may have the right of way in any given situation, if one of them isn't paying attention and the other is, we can avoid a lot of crashes through the town um, just by someone being more patient. That's what we want. We're about a month away from having uh, had a, a major shooting incident um, in actually in White Township, but uh, still Indiana Borough Police very much involved in, um, in in that night. And I'm sure that in this past month, you've had a chance to review uh, how the how the troops performed, uh, how the cooperation between agencies was working on that night. Have you come to any conclusions after you've done uh, the examinations, read all the reports? Well, I, I would say generally and foremost that the Indiana community is blessed to have the first responders that they do have with the training that they do have. Uh, you know, we are not, none of us are going to be able to avoid every possible negative situation that could occur, but everyone that responded that night responded heroically and admirably into a really adverse situation. And I will tell you that because this was in, because this occurred at the border of Indiana borough doesn't, make us any less immune in Indiana borough from that happening. I mean, we are one Indiana community. The, the line, there's no, there's no fundamental borders between Indiana borough and White Township or Indiana borough and IUP or White Township and IUP. So we all have to work together. But we do plan in advance. We take that very seriously. So everyone in the public can be very confident that police, fire, and EMS, along with the university, along with our, our elected officials, plan, plan, plan. So there are strategies in place. And then there's a response. So what we can't proactively stop from occurring, we have response plans. And so I have nothing I have nothing critical to say about the cooperation level of any agency that was responded to that event, including IRMC. There's so many people that we could thank and appreciate as a community for that not being worse than it was. So um, my after-action review of that is nothing but praise for the people that were responding into that. And uh, certainly my heart goes out to the victims and to everyone who's subsequently impacted because, you know, that's an alarming thing to have mm -hmm. happen. You know, we never wanted to see it happen. It happened. It's being investigated professionally. It was the response was professional. Um, but there's a tragedy that occurred. And so we don't want to overlook that also. No matter how successful our initial response may have been in our eyes as a first responder, there was a life lost and there's a lot of injury. And so I don't want to be flippant about that either. Yeah, and, and when you have incidents like that, uh, you have to look for the lessons learned out of them. Uh, were our plans adequate? Did did was there something that occurred that we didn't anticipate? Um, what were the unique circumstances to that one that really don't fit into any mold or model? Uh, all of those things have to be analyzed too. They do, and everyone can be certain that there's going to be, if there haven't been already, extensive after action reviews. Uh, 
not only individually from agency to agency, but also all of us as stakeholders in the community. What did we do well? What could we do better? You know, um, and that's not to say that it was handled perfectly. There's no incident that we can handle perfectly or, or that is handled so perfectly that we can't improve upon it. So there's always lessons learned. Sometimes the most valuable things that we can do in law enforcement, and I'm sure it's like this with all first responders, but specifically for law enforcement, is that we review. You know, okay, we handled this. Could we have handled it better? Could we have avoided force by something else that we did? Could we have avoided this negative situation by a plan or a process that we have in place? How did this interaction turn out? Why was it positive? Why was it negative? Trust me when I tell you that there's no police officer that I've ever met that wants a negative interaction with anybody. But we have to train for them because they occur. Sadly, they occur with too much frequency. So anything that any of us can do to beat that back is time well spent. So that's that's our yeah. goal. We're heading into the holiday season. Of course, uh, you'll be having your own unique challenges uh, that uh, happen at the holidays. There will be increased traffic downtown, shoppers and everybody, and uh, uh, people for the celebrations, the wonderful life parade, and uh, all of the events that come along with that. Uh, it's it's a fun time for a lot of folks. It's a lot of work for guys like you and, and the entire police force, but it's worth it, isn't it? It is. It is the busiest time of year, but it's also the best time of year. And uh, spirits are very high, and that's great. But certainly, like I said, when large crowds and large special events happen, the, there is an increase in safety concerns. So I do want to take this opportunity to say, number one, invite everybody to come to Indiana. Come to Indiana for Light Up Night. Come to Indiana for the holidays. Shop downtown. Uh, great businesses, great business owners, great atmosphere, great restaurants, and a great police department. And our partners and uh, will, along with us, uh, have a plan in place for the largest event, which is Light Up Night and the parade. And uh, so arrive early. Be patient. Park close. Utilize the parking garage. It's probably as close as you could park uh, to the Christmas tree lighting. But expect expect road closures. Expect parking to be limited. And, um, you know, as early as you can get into town, eat at a restaurant, walk around downtown, and then find a parade spot. Because the more patient that the public can be, the safer we can all be. Yeah, spirit yeah. of the season. That's right. Very good. Indiana Borough Police Chief Justin Shaw, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. Fox News is next at the top of the hour, and then Josh is back with us from the WCCS newsroom. It's two and a half minutes away from the top of the hour. Your office is filled with equipment, printers, a copier or two, scanners, and maybe even a fax. Getting trained or tech support shouldn't be a hassle. Burger Office Systems makes it easy. The new Xerox machines do all of that and more in one machine. When you get your Xerox from Burger Office Systems, you'll see it's much more than a copier. It's also the team who stands behind it. Call Burger Office Systems today, 349-3710. Burger Office Systems, your local authorized Xerox technology provider. Hello, this is Peter Broad, the president of Indiana Borough Council. Under my leadership, council has made many improvements, including paving streets and reducing flooding, avoiding unnecessary taxes, and bringing more public events to downtown to benefit the local economy. Again, this is Peter Broad, and I'm asking you to vote for me and my fellow volunteer Indiana Borough Councilors. Paid for by Indiana Vibe. Hi, I'm attorney Bob Marcus. And I'm attorney Brian Mitterheiser. If you've been hurt in an accident, you need an experienced team of attorneys, and that's Marcus and Mac. For nearly 50 years, we've helped clients obtain financial compensation for their losses, and our firm is dedicated to doing what is right and whatever it takes. If you've been hurt in an accident, tell them you mean business and call Marcus and Mac. Voted best personal injury lawyer two straight years in the Best of Indiana County contest. Visit them online at marcusandmac.com. Hello, this is Eva Strang with the Allied Milk Producers. The delicious dairy products made by our members begin at one of our family-owned farms. These hardworking families take great pride in producing fresh, high-quality milk every day, just as they learn from previous generations. The Allied Milk Producers member farms dot the rural landscape, many not far from you. Our member farms are dedicated to maintaining the highest standards of care for their animals, producing consistently high-quality milk. Do you ever have questions in your life, questions that you are searching to find answers to? Hi, I'm Pastor Ben Blowers with the Indiana Wesleyan Methodist Church, 
And I want to invite you to listen to our church-sponsored program, The Voice of Victory, every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. on this station, a.m. 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM. Tune in and find biblical help, guidance, and inspiration for answering life's questions. 101.1 FM and AM 1160 WCCS, Homer City, Commodore. WCCS. Abortion is on the ballot on Election Day. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News, directly in Ohio, where voters will today answer a question. If abortion rights should be written into the state constitution. The issue is on the ballot indirectly in Virginia, where control of the state legislature is at stake. Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin said this morning if the GOP takes the House and the Senate there. I will support one bill. One bill that will protect life at 15 weeks. A bill that will have exceptions for rape and incest and when the life of the mother is at risk. Now, governors in two states are... 